Hi everyone! Welcome back to another Mystery Monday. I'm so happy to have you here. Today I'm reviewing The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, one of my favorite reads since I've started um, reading again in October. Well, I was thinking, how can I be consistent throughout my reviewings? So I offer the same amount of um, information for each book that I do talk about, so you know what to expect. So I came up with um, six talking points, and I'll try to be consistent with it throughout. So just before getting to the book, this is a bit of housekeeping. I'll be mentioning, and uh, if I'm looking down, sorry, I do have some notes and as I get more used to it, hopefully I won't be needing them anymore. But my six talking points are, first I'm just gonna, you know, mention the book, the author, the year that it was written or first published, the plot summary, which I'll be reading straight from the book, so it's not my words, it's literally what they want you to know. Um, little tidbits about the plot mechanics, but more in the sense of who narrates it and what time is it set in and if there's anything that I thought that was interesting which was uh, a choice by the author to engage us and then the main takeaway is what did I like dislike or anything between about the book and then I'll go over uh, a quick review of my ratings with my final moustache um, overall rating and then I'll let you know whether or not I recommend this book. So I read The Turn of the Key as an ebook. So I don't have a physical copy with me today. I'll just leave it somewhere around here for you to see. Uh, I borrowed it from my local library, but I did order it. It just hasn't arrived yet. But I really thought that this would be like such a good book to talk about because I also have spoilers for this. This review you're watching right now is completely spoiler free, but then I'll do a part two to this video. So if you want to know spoilers and come in and join me on the discussion about the ending, um, I'll link it in the card above here as well. Um, it will be on the playlist that I'll link at the end of my video. So hope to see at least some of you there, but if not, um, if you haven't read the book, don't jump into the spoiler. If you have any plans to read it because you need to experience it unscathed. Um, so I'm talking about The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. It was written in and published in 2019. Um, I'll read this summary straight from the book, so this one I'll be looking down, I'm sorry, but it says, when Rowan stumbles across an ad for a living nanny, she's looking for something else completely, but it seems like too good an opportunity to miss. With a staggeringly generous salary, she is smitten by the luxurious smart house, fitted out with modern conveniences, by the beautiful Scottish Highlands, and by this picture-perfect family. What Ryan doesn't, Rowan doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare, one that will end with a child dead and Rowan in prison awaiting trial for murder. Writing to her lawyer from prison, Rowan struggles to explain the unraveling events that have led to her incarceration. It wasn't just the constant surveillance from the cameras installed around the house or the manufacturing technology that woke the household with booming music or turned the lights off at the worst possible time. It wasn't just the children who turned out to be a far cry from immaculately behaved model children she met at her interview. It wasn't even the way she was left alone for weeks at a time with no adults, adult, no adults around, apart from the enigmatic handyman, Jack Grant. It was everything. Rowan knows she's made mistakes. She admits that she lied to obtain the post and that her behavior toward the children wasn't always ideal. She's not innocent by any means, but she maintains she's not guilty. At least not of murder, which means something else is. 
So as uh, this uh, little synopsis kind of mentioned, so you start the book with Rowan inside her cell as she awaits murder. E the book is narrated by Rowan from her prison cell in the form of a letter she's writing to Mr. Wrexham, which is uh, the new lawyer that she hopes to get to help her win this case as she claims she is completely innocent. From this brief explanation of her beginner of the letter, then we go way back to the first day that she reads the um, posting on the newspaper, how she applies and goes for an interview and eventually gets the job. And from there, the letter narrates items chronologically until we get to, you know, who died. Because the family has three daughters and we know one of them died. And that's why Rowan is in um, prison awaiting a murder trial. But we don't know which one of them it is. So that was something that I really found. It was uh, really interesting. And um, I loved how the story was told because as she's telling everything so we can get in her mind frame and explaining everything that he, she has done wrong but pleading that she has not committed murder. It is, I don't know, you just feel for her. You just go towards it. And I just loved, it was so beautiful the way that story was told. And I think because she was basically pleading for her life, you just couldn't put it down. You needed to know not only who died, because nobody wants a child to die, but um, why was Rowan a suspect to begin with? And what ha everything that has happened that led to the one uh, very fatal and unfortunate moment. Okay, so the way I feel about the book has changed slightly in the about month that I have a lesson in. At first glance, when the book ended, I can say that I loved 100% the book up to the 99% mark. And then the last 1%, which is the end and the big review and plot twist, I absolutely hated it. So I didn't know how I really felt about the book at the time. I really hated it for some things that I'll mention in my um, spoiler session. But the more I sat on it, I think the more it sunk in and I could see most of it even though there were still some things that for me do not make sense. Um, overall, I just feel, I don't know if this is a spoiler, I hope it isn't, but uh, it is one of those books that uh, with an open end. So some people might interpret it one thing and, and some people might interpret it something else completely. I do like books with some open ends and sometimes I really even prefer them especially if the alternative is uh, something that I really don't want to happen. Sometimes I really like that idea of, you know, I can close a book my own way and be set aside. But I feel that there were just some loose ends that could have been explained better. And I'll leave it at this for this portion of the video. And um, for these things, again, when you're reading a book, sometimes you miss some things completely. And that's why I do like reading some books over and over and over again, because you always get something different. And that's why I wanted to make a part two, because maybe some of the questions that I was left with, someone else found within the text the answer to them. So it would be nice to have the discussion. And like I said, just hop over to the spoiler video. Um, what did I like about the book? I really did like this slow build of that letter format brought it in because it was gut-wrenching to hear her please. And you really wanted to get to know the characters, to get to know the children. You really, like some characters are so unlikable and you wanted to know what made them that way. Is it going to answer? There are some elements in the book that makes you wonder if there is anything supernatural going on. So you also, as you read the book, 
you're not sure until the very end if it's supernatural or superhuman, like like human, not superhuman, but you know what I mean. So I, I really liked discovering all of those things as um, it goes along and getting to know Rowan through her own flawed vision of herself was very like enjoyable as well I really so like the narration overall it was like something that I really enjoyed about um the turn of the key another thing that I really liked it was some way it felt like an interactive book because when someone is writing such a vulnerable letter that you privy to you feel like you get to know them a little bit so as Rowan is telling her things and sometimes you can see the bigger picture I, I found myself just yelling at the book like stop stupid don't do this don't do that run away or something like that so I was almost interacting with her because some of her choices were not the best choices and I just wanted her not to make it which is really funny because well, the mom's name is Sandra and the three dollar three daughters are um, Ellie, Rhiannon and Maddie. Rhiannon, Maddie and Rowan. My mind was telling me to dislike them because at points they were very, very um, unlikable characters. But my heart felt this overwhelming sense of empathy and I just wanted to protect them because all of them what made them unlikable was uh, actions coming from a place of pain that you get to know the source of the pain throughout the book so it was like this very like push and pull relationship I wanted to protect them I wanted to make everything better to see them flower as better people but at the same time they weren't very nice so mm, I really enjoyed those feelings another thing that I'm not sure if I liked it or not the house they live in is a very very smart house you, the house talks to you all the time the parents have camera everywhere and they can talk from speakerphone in the house from an app on their phone if you get the last drop of milk, the fridge already knows to add it to the grocery list. And even when the list is full, sends the list to the grocery so you can just pick it up. It's like, it's an extremely smart house. And the house have every potential to be a key character, had the huge potential of being the hero of the story. We don't know if it will be or not. But at the same time, even reading about the house, I felt like I cannot live in the place. The anxiety I would have from being like watched and just have like this house almost be alive. So I found like that very interesting. And I think Ruth Ware did a very good job of um, describing the house and what it would feel like to live in it from the point of view of someone who really dislike it which is Rowan and um, Sandra and some of the other characters who really loved it because they designed it so you can see the benefits and um, the downsides to leaving on the house through those characters so I really enjoy getting to know um, the setting through those two point of views so um, anything else I say about the book at this point will be a spoiler. So I'll finish my commentary on this point and I'll just go straight to uh, my rating. So for enjoy enjoyability, I gave a nine. I rated this book eight for characters. I felt that most of the characters were very well drawn. There was just a few things about some of the characters that I felt were uh, either one dimensional and I was just not drawn to them. The ambience, like I said, was uh, really, really good. So I rated a nine. For fairness, I gave this book an eight out of 10. Ruth Ware always, always plays fair. Everything, 
was a clue in the book, so you can't say that you were duped about things that were at least very subtle hints, if anything else. I can say that, but the reason why I gave eight and not 10 is because of, um, I don't know how to put it without spoiling, but let's just say that there has been some actions by one character that I wasn't sure if it made sense. And then for the plot, I gave a nine out of 10. It was, uh, I really loved it. It has uh, very little things in common other than the general plot with the turn of the screw by Heron James. So it is not the most original plot, but Ruth Ware really did it her own. So I really liked that. And for the um, execution, I gave an eight out of 10 only because I didn't really, uh, like the ending but i plan on revisiting this book in the future and i'm pretty sure that um, the rating for this book is gonna go up i just need to let it sit with me a little more so all in all the turn of the key by ruth weir got for me a 4.25 mustaches and i would say that i 100 percent recommend this book it i was literally so enthralled i couldn't put it down i it was less than 24 hours from the first word to the end it was amazing i only stopped reading this book to sleep and i didn't even sleep much that night and now uh, to go to work as soon as i came home i i think i didn't even cook dinner that night i told the boys to just get over it i just needed to finish so i definitely want everybody to have this reading experience now if you want to be spoiled because you don't care and it's never going to read this book or you have read this book and you don't mind spoilers because you want to also talk about the ending hop on to my second video see you soon and if i don't i'll see you next wednesday and until then be the hummingbird. <laughs>